If a broad long-term investment in the stock market is such a good deal, why don't banks do the obvious things? There is a fundamental discrepancy or paradox that has been keeping myself, and many others, away from the stock market. Before I explain it, let me mention some selected popular questions on this site in which the consensus is that in the long term a broad investment in the stock market will yield a substantially positive average annual return rate. Why should we expect stocks to go up in the long term? Why do people claim that stock markets are broadly exponential in the long term? Why isn't everybody rich? Stock market long-term risks. Is it a lie that you can easily make money passively in the stock market? Are index funds really as good as experts claim? In view of all this consensus, we can almost say that it has become common knowledge that investing in the broad stock market sufficient diversification on a long-term perspective several decades is a very good investment strategy. More precisely, the consensus seems to be that there is some average annual return rate, say 3%, replace this number by something higher, lower if you prefer, such that if your investment is diversified enough and your time span is long enough, the risk that your actual average annual return rate drops below that rate tends towards zero. Now comes the first question. Why doesn't any serious bank offer a savings account with a fixed 2% interest rate for an unlimited amount of time? After all, a large bank has the optimal prerequisites for diversification and holding stocks for many decades, and if the above is true, then they would still earn at least 1% of their customers' account values each year by essentially doing not very much except buying and selling some index funds according to what customers want to withdraw or pay in. My own first objection to the question would be the following. If there is a market crash and at the same time a lot of customers want to withdraw money from their accounts, the bank might be in big trouble because the total value of the stocks owned by the bank could be less than what the customers want to withdraw. However, I feel that this is not really an objection because even without the above obvious product, banks will always be in trouble if their customers want to withdraw too much money at once. What's bothering me even more is the second question. Why don't all banks borrow a huge amount of money from the central bank and invest it in the stock market on a broad, long-term basis? As far as I know, banks can borrow money from the central bank at quite low interest rates, much less than the expected long-term average annual return rate of the broad stock market. In Europe, that interest rate is currently even negative. Dot. So why don't all banks just buy index funds using this free money and just hold them forever, watching them grow in value? Fundamentally, I think there's a high level and perhaps unsatisfying answer to this. It's because that's not banking as a business, and a bank is established to do banking, not to get into the stock market. In other words, this question strikes me about the same as asking, why don't ice cream shops stop selling ice cream and instead get in the business of selling pancakes? After all, you can make a lot of money selling pancakes. Well yes, you can get rich selling pancakes, but not every business is a pancake shop. Certainly, some businesses get rich selling pancakes, but other businesses with different motivations and risk tolerances decide to sell ice cream instead. To make this clear in your banking context, such a business would essentially be called a hedge fund or investment management company, not a bank. It's fine if a company wants to be a hedge fund, but a company that is calling itself a bank can't secretly switch over to being a hedge fund, and still call itself a bank while supporting banking activities for normal consumers. From a more practical perspective, most jurisdictions have carefully developed regulations that would essentially prohibit a business calling itself a bank from doing what you're discussing. Essentially, these regulations exist because of my first point, the business model you're describing isn't banking, and, regulations are designed around that, in the sense that regulations keep banks acting like banks and stop them from trying to act like something that isn't a bank. I'm editing to clarify a portion of your question, as an example of this disconnect. You said, as far as I know, banks can borrow money from the central bank at quite low interest rates. That's not really the whole story. Think of it this way. Imagine if you were to walk into a retail bank right now, and ask for a loan for a million dollars. The bank would certainly ask you some questions, including asking what you intended to do with that money and how you could show proof that you are able to pay it back. If you were able to prove that you have a large and stable income, and that you were planning on using the million dollars to purchase a home that's actually worth a million dollars, you might get approved. But what if you told the bank? I'm actually empty-handed, but I'm going to go invest this in the stock market. I think I have a proven way to make a positive return. 
They might deny you on the spot, or at least they might have a lot more questions for you. The relationship between central banks and retail banks is fundamentally similar. A retail bank can't just call up the central bank and say, please wire me a billion dollars, and instantly, the money shows up. Retail banks essentially have to go through a process of validating their operational intentions, showing proof that they can pay the loan back, and perhaps even putting up collateral, before the money changes hands. And, a retail bank with no collateral who indicated that they wanted to play the stock market would almost certainly get turned down by the central bank. I'm making another edit to address another core flaw in your assumptions. You said, we can almost say that it has become common knowledge that investing in the broad stock market sufficient diversification on a long-term perspective several decades is a very good investment strategy. While that may be a sound theory, it's not a practical method for a bank to keep or invest assets because of liquidity and predictability. It may be accurate to say that in the long term a diversified stock portfolio can be bulletproof. But banks can't issue cash to deposit customers based on long-term theories. They have to be able to predict the availability of funds very well, the stability of their outcomes, not just the expected result. In other words, if a bank has $10 billion in assets, they need to know precisely how much of that will be available to them tomorrow, or next Tuesday, or in six months. Your stock market theory may have the right expected outcome positive growth, but it's got far too much potential variance on any particular day. Yes, in the long run, you may make money, but can you tell me exactly how much cash you'll have next Tuesday? No, you can't. You might have an acceptable expected outcome. On average. For all next Tuesdays. But what if coronavirus takes off in the US this weekend? Or something else happens? Banks aren't just concerned about the expected outcome, they're also concerned about variability in the range of expected outcomes. People do banking activities like deposit their paycheck into a deposit account, or take out a credit card loan, with the expectation of stability and availability of funds. Those features, which are essentially the definition of retail banking come as a trade-off in terms of a slightly lower return compared to your stock market portfolio.